he was coming to Donbass today. He was uh, coming to the front line. He was just three kilometers from Ukrainian position. Uh, he was uh, in exactly dangerous area. You're not afraid? Well, uh, as you just said, we just arrived, and uh, for me, it's absolutely surreal to, to, to see all this. Of course, I, I knew what happened, but to, to see all the houses that in every single house you can see the shots and still you can see the people walking on the streets and of course you feel you feel the energy is is, is heavy and of course also dangerous but on on the other hand um it's not maybe it's not not really real for me not yet 4 июля 2014 года мы двое суток сидели под градами вот Ну, мы в своей своей квартире сидели, на третьем этаже, грады лупили так, что дом сотрясали. Это когда? Это июль 2014 года. Потом мы ушли в бомбоубежище, потому что уже невозможно было находиться. Просто жуткий страх. Вот, ушли в бомбоубежище, сутки просидели там. Потом решили пойти домой, так сказать, позавтракать, переодеться. Только зашли домой. Опять начался обстрел, не успели добежать. Но потом нас оттуда вывезли из бомбоубежища. Maybe I have to stay here a little while to really feel what it means. But for now it's, it's a little bit in, the, in a shocking situation, shocking mode. But I see people are living here. So we are here also. It's a, our responsibility, I think, for us to, to show the people in the West how the people, how the conditions are. This is the point, and actually, I think, of course, we are afraid, but uh, I think uh, uh, we know actually quite good what we are doing here, especially before we made this trip. So, and now we went to the front line there, and we also heard uh, machine gun fire. So this was the point where we said, okay, now we start and. Uh, drive a little bit f far away from, from the front line. So uh, I think it's quite dangerous. Actually, it's uh, very, very dangerous. But you know, we have to show the people in Germany, uh, especially uh, in Germany, but also in Europe, what happened here. That there is still a war. I mean, uh, in the media, the, uh, or the media is talking about uh, um, that the the weapons are don't fire anymore here. That the war is actually over, and uh, nobody is talking about the. The, the people here, what happened here, I mean, you can see it here, many houses like this, they are totally ruined, mm -hmm. the families are totally ruined, they are dying so many people, and uh, the media give a fuck. So that's why uh, we decide to do this dangerous trip, but um, I think we have to do it, to show the people what happened here, that they don't forget the Donbass, don't forget the people who live in these very hard conditions. With, uh, they are scared every day, every night you can hear the gunfire. So uh, for us, maybe it's dangerous for a few days, mm -hmm. but for these people here, it's dangerous since more than two years, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we can just hope the best for, for those people here and that the war will stop soon. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are here. We want to show the people that they have to push the government that they will stop this war here. In the area of the airport, on plates, now there is a huge angel. Angel, and inside the angel, the sky. And below the sign, 101. 101 dead children. 
101 унесенная жизнь детская. Люди, де, дети, которые хотели жить. Мальчик, который, который был ранен, он сказал, мама несла его на руках, он сказал, мама, я хочу жить, за что? And how you think uh, the International Council can do something to these people to help them? I uh, talking about not government or the streets, just uh, the civilian. I, I think they should, but um, it's uh, always problematic with politics because uh, they have different positions and uh, that's why we have this war here. But um, I think the big NGOs, for example, Red Cross uh, or other ones, uh, can do a lot here. They just have to do it. I mean, we are a small, a really, really small NGO. Actually, we are just two people. And we, we can realize this to, to bring here some goods for the people, to buy some stuff and help the people. So why don't the uh, Red Cross is doing this mm. and other ones? I don't know why. Usually it's possible. In the city it is safe and you can arrange uh, some, some big spots where you... Uh, stock some food and the people can come and take some food. I don't know why why it doesn't happen. Yeah, so I think uh, the answer also lies in, in us, the people. Not only here in Ukraine or Russia or in all Europe, all over the world. We have to bring back uh, what what happened here to to the people's minds. And if the people in in Germany understand what is still going on here, maybe this uh, can. This gives a gives more pressure to to uh, NGOs like Red Cross or for example, because the people when I told my my friends, okay, I'm going to East Ukraine, they were not really aware of the fact that it could be dangerous still because there are not uh, anything in the media about it. Um, so it's a forgotten war, and I believe, of course. There was a reason why the governments decided or why, why the politics decided to, to have this war. So I would not count on them to make a change, but I would count on the people, on our neighbors of the United Europe, really the United World. Подарок скажи, surprise. Gift from Ukraine. This is from Rocket. The little rocket is not great, it's a little. To not destroy it, uh, just to, to burn something. So, to destroy houses actually. It to burn some houses. Five or six. It explodes and making fire, making burn. You know. And they found it here, in this apartment? Yes. And at this time the people was living here. And more than 28 people died here. And this is just one street farm. Just one street farm. Yes. And you also was in uh, the center of the Donetsk, the capital city of DPR, and uh, the mass media on the west uh, thought uh, that uh, Donetsk is empty, there is no electricity, no hospital, no water. Well, what do you see? No, I mean, we were very surprised when we arrived. Of course, we expected a lot of damage and um, But you can really see, as, as uh, our friends here told us, uh, there are two cities. It's, it's the inner city, and of course there was also uh, shootings, and you can see also the damage, but it's, um, it's a huge city, it's a very impressive city, and we didn't know that, actually. So um, you can see that in the past, two years ago, or even more, it must have been a very yeah, rich or um, growing city. That, that could uh, yeah, have a good infrastructure and now you can see when you go to the out, out suburbs, outer suburbs uh, what happened to this to the city. I mean, it's not empty, of course, the people are coming back and in the city center, it, for me, it seems quite safe. Uh, but when you walk in the outside, you really realize what happened to this city that used to be a, a really growing growing economically, maybe also growing uh, city. So. The thing is, when you are in the inner part of uh, Donetsk, for example, and you do, don't know that there is uh, still war, uh, you, you, you wouldn't uh, realize it. Yeah. I mean, uh, 
this is actually normal life. The people go to work, the people go to the big places, uh, for example, the, uh, um, the Schachtor Donetsk Stadium with uh, uh, big monuments uh, in front and uh, small monuments for, for the angels. And the people are living in a normal way, actually. So, and uh, the city is full and you have electricity, you have uh, petrol, you have warm water, we as well in our apartment. Yeah. So, I think the situation in the inner part of Donetsk is quite okay. But um, this is just the first view, because after uh, this long time of war and blockade from the western part, I think there are many, many people who are hungry, who don't have enough uh, money to, mm. to uh, buy some food and stuff like this. And I think we will see this uh, after a while, not in the first moment, at the first view, but when you, when you, in Germany we say, when you look behind the door, you will mm. see something more. Yeah, but um, in the first view, it was quite okay. Yeah. But, uh, but I also think you can feel uh, that the city was weakened and that the infrastructure right. is, is destroyed. And uh, now I see this used to be a really big, strong city. And, oh, yes. and what happened with the people and with the economy is that the city is weakened now. And there are not so many people, of course. I, I can imagine three years ago that it was full, it was a shining city. And now it's, it's a very, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a melancholy, depressive mode there, I think. I, I have the feeling. But still, it's, it's very impressive to see, to see the inner. That the people realize, here are our brothers and sisters suffering and we have to do something against it, and we can do something. It doesn't matter what the governments are doing, we can go there and bring help, and we can collect goods, and, and we can talk about what, we, what is, is going on. We are the people, not the governments. The governments are the elites, but we are the people, and we can stay together. So please, please stand up and help these people here. Thank you very much.